Section 1.2, displaying categorical data. In this section, we're going to talk about the different types of graphs that we can use to represent a categorical variable. So the one that we're going to use most often, and we'll use it most often because it's the best option for displaying categorical uh, data, is a bar chart. So we have our data set that we talked about in section 1.1 of the 40 students choosing whether to be famous, happy, healthy, or rich. And step one, we're going to draw a label the axes for our bar chart. All right, make sure that when we draw these, we have the X and Y axis labeled. So on the bottom, we have preferred status, which is going to be these options right here, and then number of students, which will be our frequencies. Step two, we want to scale the axes, and this is the part where most people, if you're going to lose points, it's probably on this section. So when we scale the axes, we want to do it in a way where we can space out all our tick marks evenly, space out our bars evenly, all right, and make them large enough that we can display all of the data. So when I look at this frequency table on the right here, we want to see what's the largest value we have. Okay, and we can see that's 21. We're, we're not going to put the total on there because that doesn't give any information. We're just looking at the four options that the students could take. So we want to make our scale large enough that we can fit that 21. All right, so here we can see we went up to 25. All right, and we want to make sure that each of the sections in between these tick marks is approximately the same width. Okay, if it's not the same width, that's going to lose you some points. Okay, on the bottom, we have those written. When we draw the bars, we want to do the same thing and make sure they're spaced evenly. And drawing the bars is that last step. So again, okay, we want to make our graphs neat. It's really not hard to make a bar chart. So take the extra couple seconds to space it out evenly. All right, make the bars the same width as well. Okay, there's something called the area rule that we're going to talk about soon enough. Uh, and we want to make sure that everything's kind of neat and a representative of the data. Now the next display for categorical data is called a pie chart. Obviously you've seen a pie chart before. You may or may not have made one. If you did make it, you probably did it with some kind of computer or technology. And it's kind of a pain to make by hand. So to start, we're gonna draw and label the circle, right? And we need to figure out what, um, how many degrees each of these sections is gonna take up. So we're gonna take the percent and we're going to multiply it by 360 degrees. So we'll start with that famous 17.5%. Okay, multiply that by 360, and we can see that's going to take up 63 degrees. Now, hopefully that's enough um, to give you an idea of what part of the pie that would look like. It doesn't have to be exact, all right? I know that this is a 90 degree. And if I were to draw a 60 degree angle or a 63 degree angle, I'm just gonna go about two thirds. So I'm gonna look for something that's about that length of a circle. Happy, we do the same thing. We get 189 degrees. That's just over 180. So instead of going to a straight line like this, I'm just gonna go a little above it. Let's do this one orange. Okay, so we would just go like right over that. And then on down the line, down the line, okay? And it would look something like this. Obviously I cheated here and I just stole it from the book. But if you have to draw one by hand, that's how you would go about it. it doesn't have to be per perfect, okay? So again, we can see that happy is about uh, just over a straight line because it's just over 180 degrees. Here's that famous, which is about two thirds of a right angle. Okay, et cetera. Just note that a pie chart needs to total 100%. Sometimes they give you four options here, and if we add these up, we'll see that it doesn't total 100%, which means that there's another category that they're not just, they're not explicitly referencing, but it's an other category. And we would add those up. Let's say that, for example, they added to 92%, 92, that's supposed to say, we would know that the other would be the remaining 8%. So just be, uh, be aware of that. Now, statistics is a real world math class and we wanna give real world answers when we're asked to do things like compare distributions with bar charts. So in this display, there were a number of males and females who were asked, which superpower would you prefer to have? And when we look at this graph, uh, there's a couple things that jump out. So to start, 
a lot more females than males chose telepathy. Males are more likely to choose freeze time and super strength. And then invisibility, we see the exact same percentages fly. There's a difference there, uh, but with a lot of things in this class, um, things won't match up exactly. All right, so there's a little bit of leeway as to what we consider the same and what we consider different. This we really could put into either. Okay, if we want to say that they were similar, uh, that would be fair. If you want to note that more females chose uh, the ability to fly, that would be fair too. Um, in addition, anytime we write an answer to a question like this, we want to write it in the context of the problem, meaning we want it to be about superpowers and whether males or females were choosing each one. So in my example solution, I wrote, write, when asked which superpower they would prefer, females were much more likely to choose telepathy while males were more inclined to select super strength or the ability to freeze time. Similar percentages of males and females chose invisibility and the ability to fly. So these last two slides are gonna go over some common mistakes that we'll see in graphical displays. So in this display, uh, Harris Interactive asked a number of results from each of these three countries. Do they prefer to shop online? Uh, and we can see that 40% of adults in the US said they did, 80% of the adults in China in the sample uh, said that they did, all right? But the issue here uh, is something that I referenced before, okay? Early in this video, I talked about the area rule. And the area rule states that the area taken up by a display should be proportional to the percent of data that it represents. So if we look at the scale on the left here, we see that China is about twice as large as the US, okay? US is at about 40%, China's at about 80%. All right, but the area taken up by this China, this flag of China here, is a lot bigger than twice as big. It's probably about four times as big if we took this and pasted that on top of that China flag. And that creates a tricky, like deceptive uh, way to make us think that this value is actually a lot larger than it actually is. All right, and the way we get around this is by keeping all of these graphs the same width on the bottom. Okay, so if we just took this width down here and we made it the same width over here, okay, and just had a really long and skinny flag, all right, that would be correct, all right, because that in that case it would be proportional. It would be twice as much area and twice as high of a percentage. Typically, when you're using any kind of graphic like the flag here, it's not a good idea. We just want to stick with regular bars and have it labeled at the bottom. Okay, this looks flashy, but it's not a very good graph. And then lastly, this is a really another common area that we'll see in graphical displays. If you keep an eye out for this one, you'll see it on new shows, you'll see it in magazines. This is the same data set that we had just referenced on the last slide, talking about the proportion of adults in these um, countries that prefer to shop online. Uh, the area rule isn't a problem anymore because we can see their bars with the same width. But what is a problem is that the scale here on the left does not go to zero. It starts at 30. And when we look at this, it looks like, so here's the US, it looks like China is about five times as big, but that's not actually the case, all right? Because this should really go down to zero. So all of these are actually a lot higher than they are. All right, so if this were created with the scale going all the way down to zero, it gives us a much better representation of the proportion or the percentages when we compare these three countries. We always want to check the scales, so we're not um, being misled by a graphic.